Hello, oh, welcome, Mooton Tug. Uh, tonight we are, uh, we're gonna demonstrate, or I guess we're gonna play around a little bit with coping saw. This here is a coping saw. Uh, originally used a long time ago to cope out uh, the profiles for crown molding. You could use it to, to make all sorts of shapes. Uh, modern tools, the jigsaw, more or less has replaced this, or uh, in terms of table uh, top machines or table machines, a scroll saw in order to be able to make intricate shapes. Uh, this is the this is the cordless version, if you will, 100% uh, meat powered. Uh, so what we what we need to do is I'm making a little I guess a bridle joint here that's going to accept. A beam in here and so we need to uh, we could chisel out the waist that seems like that would take an awfully long time uh, to chisel through here instead what we are going to do uh, so first things first I did this earlier and you know what so this is uh, an egg beater drill and I just have a just a regular nail then I, I lop the, the head off of it and put it in there. It works pretty well, at least on pine. Uh, so let's see here. So we're going to go in here. And we're going to try this. I'm going to try and open up the cut just a little bit. Just a little bit. So that way when I get down in there with a Zucoping saw, and I don't know why I went on the other side, I, do that. Uh, I can just I can get down the depth. And turn now. There's two schools of thoughts on which way you need to have the coping saw teeth facing. One says you have to have them facing this way, so you're cutting on the push stroke. The other one is you need to have them facing backwards, so you're cutting on the pull stroke. Um, I taught myself how to use this on the push stroke, and recently I flipped it around just to see if there's any sort of benefit to cutting on the pull stroke. Uh, I haven't found any benefits yet. Uh, obviously, it takes a little bit to get used to uh, cutting on different strokes, but hey, different strokes for different folks, right? So, uh, there we go. You just get down into the cut, and uh, when I have dovetails to do, when I'm, when I'm coping out dovetails, I'll get it down to the bottom, and then I'll, without trying to direct it anywhere, I'm just trying to rotate it, I will simply go back and forth while I'm rotating the saw so it kind of clears out the way. One downside of that is it'll twist your blade and shortens the length of the, the lifespan of your blade, but then you don't have uh, the waste the waste in the corners uh, to cut out. So then you just start going. One thing you want to do is you want to first cut on the side you can see. So for me, you want to cut on this side. So advance it across. Uh, in this case, I have a pencil line. Advance it across there. And you can cope, 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 chameleon. And then, uh, in theory, as you bring the back side along, it should track fairly straight and level. Uh, I have found when, I, when I'm using this, I have to hold my hands up higher than what I think uh, in order to get a level cut. Otherwise, Otherwise, it's, it's, the cut is like this. Uh, so higher than what you think, and then just go across there. And uh, there you have it. Pretty, pretty simple and easy. Um, you take a rasp. This is a Shinto rasp I bought off of Amazon for 15, 20 bucks. It's more or less just a whole bunch of hacksaw blades riveted together. It works really well. Uh, now, I've never used any of the uh, fancy rasps, hand cut rasps, but I mean, this, this does what I want it to do, a rasp, I mean, it'll leave a fairly, fairly smooth surface. It is, I mean, it is a rasp after all, so it definitely shouldn't be the last thing that touches the wood. Um, sometimes when I when I get to feeling really uh, persnickety about it, uh, and I really don't want to use sandpaper, 
I'll follow Rasp up with files. Um, I have a couple different files I use. This one on the inside here, I'm just gonna leave it as is. And this is ultimately gonna be a stockade. You know, the thing where the people would be, would be in there like this and they'd be like, oh, help me. Uh, back in the old times, kind of a Halloween decoration. Uh, so a little bit of roughness I, I really don't care about. Um, if this were a piece of actual furniture, I would I'd come in here with maybe a spoke shave, maybe some chisels, clean up the insides, clean up this down here. But on this one, I really, really, really don't care. And, uh, and so that's, I mean, that's ultimately how to use a, a, a coping saw. And they do have a feature to where when you loosen the handle a little bit, you can rotate the blade. So all sorts of different uh, different directions. When I'm cutting dovetails, it's usually I'll put it in there at a 90 degree, nine, nine, 90 degree angle, sonny. Get, get it in the camera right. Come on. There you go. Uh, so that way when you're, when you're cutting, you can, you can come and you can cut like this. Um, which works if you have a real wide piece and you need to cut out a portion. So yeah, let's go and so this one is, it's an Eclipse uh, body and I use Zona blade. Zona, it, it, it seems to work, I don't know. If, and it's all relatively cheap. I think I got, uh, I got the body off Amazon for 15 bucks and the blades I get off Amazon for uh, six or seven bucks for a pack of four or five of them or something like that. I don't really remember. I buy them so infrequently um, that I probably could splurge and buy some really nice ones, but you know what? This cuts the wood. I usually work in pine. Uh, I'm a softwood kind of guy. Uh, I don't have to compensate for other areas. And so that is, uh, that is that. All right, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.